Is JJ Watt's return to the Houston Texans inevitable? You are Locked On Texans, your daily podcast on the Houston Texans. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, 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 Locked On Texan fans, listeners, and viewers to this Wednesday episode of the Locked On Texan Podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your Texas football analyst, John, some sports guy Hickman on the other side of the screen, Texas credential media member, Sports Illustrated's own mm. Cody Davis. Uh, we're going to have a great show today, but I want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by... Fan duel make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning five dollar bet. That's 150 dollars in your pocket with any winning five dollar bet. Just visit fanduel.com to get started today. Thank you to all of our first time listeners and viewers. Uh, please subscribe, like, and comment to the Like on Texan podcast on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcast. And thank you to all of our returning listeners stopping. Back hmm. by lending your ears, Cody and I continue to talk Texans. And today is going to be a fun show up until the last segment because once again, it seems like the success of the Houston Texans have broke the AFC South because the Tennessee Titans made a very good pickup. So we're going to look at that and yeah. also look at the AFC South as a whole. But for this entire show, we want to look at and dive more into whether or not J.J. Watt's return to the Houston Texans is inevitable at this point. And listeners, viewers, John, please forgive me for returning back to this topic so soon because we closed, kind of we, we, we closed out Monday installment, you know, kind of playing around with the idea, you know, because we closed out saying, you know, what is the realistic um, possibility of J.J. Watt returning to the Houston Texans? However, John, that conversation took place before the Houston Texans golf tournament and before we had an opportunity to talk to head coach D'Amico Ryans. And after listening and watching D'Amico's demeanor, after going back and listening again to what J.J. Watt had to say about the possibility of returning to this franchise as a player, John, at first I thought this was a joke. At first I thought this was just a talking point. However, I'm starting to get the sense that this might be a little bit more realistic than what we originally thought. Oh, I mean, I'm a very fortunate, lucky man. I got a beautiful wife. I got a beautiful son. I've had 12 great years in this league, and I've, I'm very thankful to have walked away healthy and playing great. Um, I mean, I told D'Amico last year, I said, don't call unless you absolutely need it, but if you ever do call, I'll be there. Um, and he knows not to call unless he absolutely needs it. Um, this is the last year I'll tell him that because I'm not going to keep training the way I've been training, but uh, he knows that if he ever truly does need it, I'll be there for him. But I don't anticipate that happening. They got a very good crew. Yeah, I love to hear JJ saying he's ready. I got got his number ready to go <laughs> just in case we need him. Uh, JJ you know, planning this softball event this past weekend. It was, it was fun to see all the guys. JJ looks good. He's in shape. He's ready to roll. So I may need to make that call. So I'm happy that the, <laughs> that, the, that it's open from him. But uh, you know, JJ is an outstanding player. Man, he's been an outstanding player for a long time in this league. And you know, it's just I'm proud of him for what he's able to do in the community, still reaching back and the people that he's touched here in the city of Houston. It's outstanding to see the response and all the people that showed up to support him this past Saturday. Oh man, really proud of JJ. I need him now. I need to make that call right now. <laughs> Anytime you get if JJ Watts ready to go, I'm ready to go. There are a couple things that I want to pull from that. John, listeners, viewers, uh, first and foremost, you know me, John, I always like to pay attention to the wording of things. And the one thing that stood out to me when I went back and I listened to um, J.J. Watt was the fact that he said that this is going to be the last year I tell him this because I'm not going to continue training like this, which let everyone know that J.J. Watt is still training at a high level. But 
more importantly, when I go back and I take a listen to Coach D'Amico Ryan's, another thing that I looked at when he said, I need him now. I understand when you take a look at the laughter and everything, you could take a, you could make it seem like, okay, maybe D'Amico Ryan's was just joking with the situation. However, you guys know me. Ever since the end of the 2023 season, I've came on this show a lot and talked about how bad Coach D'Amico Ryan's wanted to improve this defensive front. And they did a re really good job improving it. They added about a three or four very good defensive linemen, headlined by Daniil Hunter. Um, you have Will Anderson Jr., who is going to be the next great defensive lineman for this organization. And everything that we saw this organization do to improve that offensive line, and look, let me be the first one to say, I love J.G., Definitely love Sheldon Rankins. That was my guy in the locker room. We all loved and respect Malik Collins. But those are three players who are no longer here. You replace their services, and I think we all agree that this defensive line is better than it was last year. However, John, the one thing that stood out to me the most was the fact that even with all those changes that was made before the draft, before the Houston Texans opened up their offseason workout program, Coach D'Amico Ryans was still talking about the importance of improving this defensive front. And what did they do in the draft? They really didn't address it like we all thought they was going to be. I mean, yes, you end up drafting Solomon Bird. You also drafted Marcus Harris. And you had an opportunity to sign for Darius Payne. But those are three prospects I'm not expecting to play a vital role for the Houston Texans, at least for this year. So, if you look at the fact that Coach is probably still looking at this, knowing that he is one defensive lineman away, this could potentially happen. I, I think um, looking at JJ returning, you got to look at a couple key factors. Uh, number one, I don't think JJ Watt returns unless Houston believes, and I think they do now, but of course, once the season kicks off, mm -hmm. you go up against those Titans, not not the Tennessee Titans, but you go up against like those big NF, you know, NFL team Chiefs, uh, Baltimore, Ravens. if you the Ravens, right? You, Lions. You, the Lions, uh, Green Bay, some of those other teams that were young and made a playoff push. Once you once you go up against those caliber of teams, right? And Dallas Cowboys is in that mix as well, but prove that. You can not only stay in the ring and fight with some of those guys, but you can knock some of them out, right? You can get some of those dubs. You are a different team than where you was last year. I think once Houston can do that, prove that to themselves on the field during the season and believe that they're ready to make a deep playoff run, that adds the fuel to the fire bringing in back J.J. Watt, right? I don't think J.J. Watt comes back without a real assurance within himself and within the organization that they're going to make a run to the championship, right? And I'm glad he put emphasis on, hey, man, listen, you better call me. This mm. year, <laughs> ain't this year, it ain't happening. I'm not coming back. Don't hold your breath. Because I do believe that once you settle into retirement for a certain amount of time, you step away from football in a sense of you're not putting your body through that rigorous uh, day in and day out grind to keep your body at football playing shape. Mm -hmm. so I think that matters as well. And I think when they give him the call matters as well, because you definitely don't want JJ just to come in right off the streets. Right. So it needs to be a, a week 10 type of deal where he can come in, get acclimated to what's going on uh, in the facilities and with this franchise now. But I also look at if Houston is bringing in JJ Watt. And I know that he was going through some personal things. So, Cody, please stop me. Uh, give, give me some knowledge if, if I'm miss if I'm providing misinformation. Excuse me. But where does that mean for Dylan Horton or mm -hmm. some, uh, Solomon Bird from USC? Or you know, does 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 Tim Settle not work out for Houston? Is Khalil Davis not working out for Houston? Like. Who's on this roster currently? And let's look at the, the, the depth right now. Tim Settle, Khalil Davis, Dylan Horton, Marcus Harris, uh, Mario Edwards Jr., who Houston signed, right? Uh, are some of those guys just not working out for Houston? 
and they're not playing to the level uh, that they need to actually be a threat defensively across that defensive front. So I, I think overall you're going to look at a situation where, okay, who's not performing? Yeah. Right. And, and, and if those guys are not performing, before we call one of our greats out of retirement, who's on the market? That that's a good point, especially the the Dylan Horton Tucker one, only because prior to him going down um with the illness in the middle of last season, he was starting to establish himself as a viable viable piece on this defensive line. And John, that's a good point that you brought up because if the Texans are looking at him to continue his development, you also got to keep in mind how much of Dylan's performance or lack thereof that we potentially going to see in 2024 is going to be similar to John Mechie. Now I understand in addition to John Mechie's illness, he also was coming off the, you know, ACL injury as well. Um, thankfully Horton doesn't have that aspect of it, but it's still going to, Horton is still going to have to have to get some time in order to get back to the player that he was. As for the other guys that you mentioned, that's an that's another smart way of looking at this as well. You know, what guys are not performing? I look at Khalil Davis as of right now. I think he can definitely um, take the helm and have a, a, a bigger role in 2024. However, you also got to keep in mind, maybe Costa Mico Ryan still want to utilize him for those situational purposes where he thrived last year. So you also well, got to take a look at that as well. And when we talk about, you know, other guys role, which we'll get into JJ Watts, his role with the Houston Texans. I don't see JJ Watt being an impactful piece to this team uh outside. Oh yeah, most definitely. <laughs> and, so I, and that's I think he he's gonna a four hour three technique where the guy next to him is giving him some easier opportunities. And of course, because of his age, I do want to mention the last time JJ Watt played football, Arizona Cardinals, and it hurts to say that. And he played some damn good football, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm so glad he said, hey, you better call me now because every day is, is crossing my mind just to wake up, eat a pint of ice cream, for, uh, you know, for my lunch and just go crazy for breakfast and go crazy for dinner. But no, honestly, you don't bring him back just because. You bring him back because you believe that, A, there's something in front of him that you're missing. He can feel that void. And you bring him back because you trust and believe, which is why I said around week 10, that he'll be ready to go for you in whatever role Houston has for him down the line if they make their call. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in your pocket to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you look at the potential return of JJ Watt, if this was to happen, John, I think the number one, I think the number one topic that is on everybody's mind is what is his impact and what type of role is he going to have? Because he's definitely not going to come back and be 2014 JJ Watt. <laughs> um, and then you also got to take a look at it from the standpoint, how successful could he be if he is moved towards the inside? Because if you take a look at the, at the defensive line unit, he's definitely not going to replace Will Anderson Jr. or Daniel Hunter. Forget replacing him. He's not even going to take snaps from them. So to your point, John, 2022, the last time J.J. played a full year of football, he looked damn good. 16 games, 12 and a half sacks, his most since the 2018 season. He mm -hmm. was still really good as a run defender. According mm -hmm. to Pro Football Focus, he had a run defensive grade of 60.8. We all know how much D'Amico Ryans and defensive coordinator Matt Burke had, has literally 
revamp this defense in order to help this defense stop the run. They finished, I believe, six overall when you look at the success that they had last season. However, I still think when you take a look at the impact that J.J. Watt could potentially have, he's still going to be able to cause disruption in the opposing team's backfield. But two and most importantly, and of course this is the biggest thing because this is what J.J. Watt has been ever since he came into the league in 2011, he is still somebody that is going to be able to disrupt the opposing team quarterback. And when you go back and you take and you take a listen to what Coach D'Amico Ryan's want all of his defensive linemen to do, that's to get after the quarterback, especially considering that this team has a goal in mind. And for order for them to reach that goal, they're going to have to go up against some of the top quarterbacks in the league. Yeah, I think the role that I think would be perfectly defined for J.J. Watt on this team, 15 to 20 snaps a game. Mm. That's it. Uh, don't go out there sack hunting. This isn't one of those opportunities where uh, you're, you're looking to win defensive player of the year, right? The same like the early days, the younger J.J. Watt, they need you to play discipline. They don't need for you to go out there and and, and... – y'all going to kill me for this, but they don't need for you to go out there and miss your assignment because you're sack hunting and jeopardize the defense. I think this is a different – Texans defense from years past. And to JJ's point, he had to do a lot of that back in the day because he was the one going out there being the dominant defensive player to give this team a shot. And then one season, five TDs, he was giving them a shot on both sides of the ball. <laughs> so, you know, I think for JJ and this team, Hunter, Will Anderson, you know, you give a lot of game to those young guys, especially Will Anderson. You give him a lot of game. You give him a lot of ways that he can win at this level, right? You are a three-time former defensive player of the year. You know about winning on the defensive line at that edge position, right? Moving in, move him in on the inside. Now, with J.J. Watt, the most snaps that he's played – um in that B gap, according to PFF, in the season has been 291. That was in 2012. Uh, 2012, JJ Watt was the defensive player of the year at 21 sacks, 30 hurries, 25 QB hits, 75 total tackles. Like we know how much of a monster he was that year. So obviously, he can be successful there. His last two years. Uh, in Arizona, played nearly 300 snaps on the inside. Uh, last his last year, 2022, played 172 snaps uh, on the inside. And again, that was another year where he was a very successful player. So he could do it. And I think at this point in his career, you can find some of those matchups. One thing about the NFL right now, they have a lot of bad guards. There is <laughs> a lot of bad interior play uh, across the league. From in, in interior play players on the offensive line, so mm -hmm. that's that's ideal for JJ. You be a coach on the field, coach on the sideline, limited snaps. Go out there, right, and, and do exactly what this team needs you to do. You don't have to hunt for sacks. And now you're looking at a team where they may be able to break the sack record that they were able to break last year uh, because you're an added piece of this team and added depth piece who's able to win on the inside. But I definitely believe that he's an inside player uh, for this defense because of who they have on the outside. Him and Danico Autry on the field at one time with Hunter and, and Anderson on the on the edge, uh, you, you may scare some teams on third and nine, third and eight, because who are you going to stop? Hmm. Let's have just a little bit more fun with this. Let's, let's get crazy. And look. Y'all, please tweet at Let's us. Crazy. Like, let us know in the comments. You know, one, do you would you like to have JJ Watt back? But two, and most importantly, what type of impact do you think you would have? Let us know, please. But John, at the end of the day, there will be only one reason why JJ Watt will return to this team. That is to finally win the one thing that's missing on his resume. Mm-hmm. A Super Bowl championship. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I know I understand it's early. Hopefully, by the bye week, we can really get into this. 
But knowing what we know about the potential of this team, the young talent, the foundation, the coaches, the owners, and all this other stuff, knowing that they are, let's say, probably if the season started tomorrow, would have, let's say, the six best odds of winning the Super Bowl title. I think that's fair. Would you say J.J. Watt will be the missing piece to help this team win the championship? No. No. Okay. I don't think he's going to be the missing piece. So, because because the 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 defensive listen, line he's... that you the, I I say that only because look the lineup that you just gave, Altry, him, Will Anderson, and Hunter. Like there's no there's no team at least in my opinion that I could see stopping that defensive front. That that alone is like whoa. Okay, who's going to score on that? But will you just take a look at? Knowing that that will be the only way that he would come back, and if we being one hundred, that would be the only way for for D'Amico and Nick Casario to put in that call and be like, "Hey, we missing this on this on this defensive front. It's crunch time. We need you to come back." Man, but the thing is, a missing piece is somebody that you know uh, can come in and. and be impactful, right? Uh, JJ was out last year. A missing piece for this team would be a Justin Simmons, a Quandre Diggs. Mm-hmm. A missing piece for this team would would be, you know, if all of their corners that they brought in actually play to the level that they actually can. Because now you don't have question marks. Now you can not have to jeopardize putting Lassen out there. I don't think J.J. Watt is a missing piece of no team in the NFL today. Mm. You say you say he set out last year, but that means he's healthier. Yeah, but he but he he was out last year. He may be healthier. I'm sure his body has healed from some of the football hits that he's taken. No doubt about it. But I don't know what you're able to do anymore. Eddie, why don't you love me, Eddie? What have you done <laughs> for me lately, Eddie? And I, I think that's a fair point, man. Like, Houston was one of the worst passing defenses last year. Mm-hmm. Houston set a sack record last year. Houston was able to get out to the quarterback last year, and they were able to do it damn well in the second half of the season. What's more of an issue right now for this team? I would say passing defense. So, and not not from being able to get after the quarterback, but giving up nearly what was it two hundred and fifty passing yards? Mm-hmm. You know, so that's that is where I look at missing pieces. You got to cut that down before you worry about anything else. Because Daniel Hunter, we know he's going to get after the quarterback, right? And I also would say this: if one of those edges, God forbid, knock on wood, go down, you definitely look to call JJ because that's his expertise. But yeah. Daniel Hunter, Will Anderson, that's at least 20 sacks right there. Danico Autry, Tim Settle, Fada Cowsey, uh, Khalil Davis, right? You're gonna those guys are gonna eat at some point. They're gonna be impactful players. Houston may add to this defensive front once the NFL goes through their cut down day. So I don't think JJ is like the missing piece of the puzzle where it's just like voila. We got it all together. I don't think so b- because their biggest issue still has a question mark around it, and that is the passing defense. Okay, we got to pause the J.J. Watt talk right here to talk about Monopoly Go. Flag on a play. I know that's what y'all are saying. Flag on a play. You heard it before. We're here right now because I know some of y'all ain't caught on to this hype yet. There's so much stuff you can do in this game in Monopoly Go. You can team up with friends for time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock. And there's so much more to get. Unique stickers you can trade uh, with friends to complete albums for big prizes, cool new playing pieces to travel the board with, and much more. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new. And exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A lot, a ton include their own unique mini games. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off the bench and download it now free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on. 
Welcome back in, Locked On Texans listeners and viewers. Regardless of how anybody may feel personally <laughs> about the Adams family or Tennessee, one cannot overlook that of all the rookies that came to this division last year, specifically quarterback, CJ AR, I'm sorry, he doesn't like to be called it, Anthony Richardson and Will Levis. Houston got a very good opportunity to see what they have in CJ Stroud. <laughs> they got one of the oh, biggest opportunities. <laughs> but I think right behind CJ, the Tennessee Titans had an opportunity to see what they have in Will Levis. I know some people may have some thumbs down like Cody does right now if you're listening or if you're watching. But what you cannot do is fault them for putting together an offense around their quarterback probably better than they've ever done, right? It's always been Derrick Henry or a very good running game. But now you look at Will Levis, Tony Pollard, Tajay Spears, DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin Ridley, who was one of their big free agent signings, uh, their tight end. Uh, a conquo, a conquo, and on Tuesday they signed Tyler Boyd, and of course he'll be playing that slot position. So their head coach and play caller right now is Bryce Callahan. We know what he can do as a play caller uh, in the NFL. With Tyler Boyd coming to the AFC South, does that change anything or how you view the Tennessee Titans? It's, for me, it's not how I view the Tennessee Titans. If to me, I go back to a statement that I made a couple of weeks ago. The AFC South could be arguably the most competitive division in football for this upcoming season. I know a lot of people still looking at the AFC North. That's understandable, but the moves that Jacksonville has made this off season, I think they had a damn good off season. Um, when you take a look at what. And then what Indianapolis did, you know, they didn't do too much, but the only thing they did was just some small retooling. We saw how close they were to knocking the Houston Texans out of this whole entire playoff race. And if they was able to get in, are we still looking at the Houston Texans the same? Um, but speaking of the team that we cover, the Houston Texans, they had a damn good offseason as well. And mm -hmm. even though I'm still not a believer in Will Levis, regardless of how anybody might feel about that statement, I just haven't seen enough. Plus, what was it? In eight games, he had four interceptions. You got to take care of the ball, young man. But, John, to your point, they have done a really good job in retooling that offense and putting weapons around him, which, by the way, if I'm Ryan Tannehill, I'm looking at that saying to myself, why the hell y'all didn't do this in the small window that we did have, if we ever had a window? But, hey, man, this, this division, it's it's going to be really good. And, I, and I'm excited because for so long, the AFC South was the laughing stock of the NFL. Majority, nine times out of ten, the worst team of the league, whether it was Jacksonville or, or Houston, you know, it came in this division. A lot of times there was only like one, maybe two teams that was fighting for a playoff chance. But as of right now, man, I think every team not only feel that they have an opportunity to win a division, but have an opportunity to make noise <laughs> in the playoffs. And it's yeah. funny and ironic that they are doing this Literally after a season where nobody expected the success of the Houston Texans. And you also got to keep in mind Jacksonville just what lost With five the of their last six games. I still mm -hmm. understand how they did that. But, hey, regardless how you feel about Tennessee, hey, shout out to them, man. At least they give Will Levis a fair opportunity, I must say. Will Levis had a game of four touchdowns last year, zero interceptions. Two touchdowns last year, zero interceptions. One game he threw for – 327. You look at the 262 game, the 238 game. Will 224 against Indy lost in overtime. Will Levis had some good moments for uh for the Titans last year as a rookie quarterback who's thrown into someone of the fire a little bit after all of the other quarterback issues took place. I'm not gonna say I'm a fan of Will Levis, but you respect again, him. I could tell. The, and they got a very good sample size of him last year. Uh, a, a good viewing of him enough to know that we got to put the talent around him. We'll see him thrive. So I, I think that a lot of people will be shocked once the season ends and you're looking at the Tennessee Titans in Houston 
both uh, getting playoff berths. You're looking, you're looking at the Tennessee Titans and saying, how were they better than Jacksonville? That ain't uh, happening, man. I, okay, <laughs> all right. Like, like honestly, like okay, all man. bias aside, oh, all God. bias aside, I'm not looking at Tennessee as a threat. Like, I still think this this division alone is a three headed monster. Texans, in the in in Jacksonville. I'm sorry, I no, John, more than Jacksonville. I think. Tennessee will be more of a threat in 2024. Have you seen what Jacksonville has done to retool their roster? And they have the better quarterback. I think Tennessee. Remember, Trevor Lawrence got hurt towards the second half of last season. I hear what you're saying. I really do. I think Tennessee will be more of a threat. In the AFC, then Jacksonville. Then Jacksonville. Come on, man. There's no way. There's no way. What I, about Indy? Do you think they're gonna be more third than Indy? I, I think Indy didn't do anything to really improve themselves. This That's why I said they just did some retooling. But the only thing they that they basically needed was Anthony Richardson to stay healthy. But he didn't. But he didn't show enough last year to like. What did they build around him? I don't think they gave. I don't think he gave him them enough last year to actually know. Gardner Minshew took that team, um, you know, to where they went last year. But you got again Bryce Callahan, Brian Kenny Callahan, excuse me, offensive coordinator for the Bengals for the last five years. He's in Tennessee now, and you had Joe Burrow, of course, big difference. But Tyler Boyd is going to play for his old OC. He knows what he wants that offense to look like. DeAndre Hopkins is an All Pro receiver who is not washed, by the way, right? Calvin really is a damn good player. Offensively, I think they're giving Will Levis the tools to go out there and be an impactful quarterback for that team. They'll be able to hurt and hit teams high with the D ball. Tyler Boyd through the middle. They got the weapons, man. Um, they've drafted Joe Alt, the tackle in the first not Joe Alt, but they did drop the tackle in the first round. So they went out there and helped improve their offensive line. I think they're gonna be better than than uh Jacksonville. I can't wait to tell Wig that too. Well, I tell you one thing. At the end of the day, if it comes down to quarterback play, <laughs> I think we can agree that the city of Houston got the best quarterback. I we think we okay. can agree with that. <laughs> we are okay here in Houston. Thank y'all for listening and watching the Locked On Texan podcast. Please subscribe, like, and comment on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Follow me on Twitter at John underscore Hickman twelve. And as always, I'm your host, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody C-O-T-Y-D-A-V-I-S underscore 24. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.